representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Captain of the Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the veterinary examination procedures for the World Endurance Championship. Also present there were the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority, President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the Vice President of the Supreme Council for Environment, Deputy Chairman Chairman of the Rashad Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The inspection was held at the Championship Village in Montpazier in France in preparation for the 160-kilometer race set to take place on Saturday with the participation of 145 jockeys from 39 countries. His Highness Sheikh Nasser led the final training session for the team before the championship where he instructed the jockeys to adhere to the technical plan. He highlighted the importance of the World Endurance Championship for the team, noting that it demonstrates their advanced capabilities and outstanding performance. He emphasized that the participation of skilled jockeys with great experience positions the team well to achieve positive results. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that the World Championship always witnesses fierce competition among jockeys for the top positions. He expressed his best wishes for the Royal Endurance team to secure top ranks and retain the title. His Highness will lead the Royal Endurance team in the championship with the horse Everest La Majorie alongside four jockeys. The Royal Endurance Team took part in the opening ceremony of the World Endurance Championship, which begins on Saturday with a 160-kilometer race in France. During the event, the Royal Endurance Team, led by the Royal Endurance Team Director, Dr. Khaled Ahmed Hassan, proudly carried Bahrain's flag onto the stage, accompanied by the riders. Dr. Khaled said that the team's presence in the championship highlights Bahrain's position in the endurance sport world, which is a testament to the support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. He said that the team is well prepared, having enhanced their performance in European competitions, including His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa's recent win in Hungary. He also wished the team success in the upcoming race. The Bahraini delegation is led by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Captain of the Bahrain Royal Endurance Team, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, alongside four jockeys. Now, voters in the first constituency of Muharraq Governorate continue to go to polling stations to exercise their constitutional right to choose their representative in the seat of the parliament among seven candidates. The voting process started at 8 a.m. at the supervisory center of the constituency in the Busaitin Preparatory School for Girls, as well as at Bahrain International Airport and Seif Mall, and only just under one hour remaining until the closing of the polling station. The by-elections of 24 are moving in according to an integrated system of procedures and laws with the aim of facilitating the electoral process in front of the voters with all integrity and transparency.
Well, earlier and under a judicial supervision, the delivery of the polling papers of the by-elections reached the supervisory centre in the first constituency of Muharraq Governorate and public centre smoothly and transparently under the protection of the Ministry of Interior and they were delivered to the committees in the polling headquarters. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Interior, through its concerned security departments, continues its efforts to secure the elections and facilitate the voters' access to polling centres to contribute to the success of this democratic process and to ensure a safe and disciplined atmosphere for the electoral process. The polling stations witnessed popular interaction with a large turnout during the voting process amid smoothness and organization of the electoral process in a distinctive democratic scene that reflects the patriotic sense of citizens in exercising their electoral right and national duty. We have more in this report. A large turnout of voters were witnessed in the first constituency of Amhara Governorate to cast their votes in the by-elections, a turnout that indicates the keenness of voters to fulfill their national duty in this electoral process. Since the doors of the polling stations opened, the voting process has been running smoothly thanks to the preparations of the polling stations, subcommittees and general committees to ensure the facilitation of the voting process. The joint cooperation between the committees and voters has played a positive role in the success of the electoral process and has continued smoothly and easily since the start of the process. 
This popular interaction and the large turnout at the polling stations reflects the high national and political awareness of citizens and their keenness to support the democratic process in the kingdom in a distinctive democratic scene that demonstrates the sense of national responsibility towards the important popular role of voters and their necessary duties that complement the government's duty and the renaissance of the nation. The by-elections 24 are witnessing full judicial supervision of the electoral process with a real guarantee of the integrity and transparency of the election. To speak about that, the chairman of the National Institution for Human Rights, Ali el Darazi, delivered the following statement. Uh, I believe that the National Institute for Human Rights in Bahrain evaluation can be briefly summarized in the following points. First of all, the uh, judicial supervision makes sure that the voting process follows the law and the rules, thus uh, enhancing the integrity of the process entirely. Uh, moreover, uh, it helps uh, keeping the voting process open, clear, ensuring that the results and the, uh, are going to be announced in a transparent manner. Also, it will increase the voter trust in the fairness uh, of the process, uh, encouraging more people to participate. And uh, judges can quickly address and resolve any issues or uh, violation during the voting process. Finally, the judicial supervision ensures that the voting process are free fair for all the participants. There is a strong public awareness about the importance of parliamentary and municipal councils, as shows uh, by high voter turnout in 2022 election. Voters were highly engaged and uh, confident in the transparency and fairness of the voting process with all necessary procedure uh, in place. Um, this growing interest shows that the citizens of Bahrain uh, uh, increasingly uh, understanding their role in shaping the country future. Uh, this positive sign of democratic growth and active participation, uh, which uh, strengthen the democratic system and support the country overall process. Well, the prosperous era of His Majesty the King witnessed complete transparency of the electoral process thanks to legislative and legal systems that organize the elections. Let's have a listen. With an atmosphere of political and democratic organization, the Kingdom of Bahrain's legislation has ensured the continuation of the democratic process in all circumstances, with the by-elections taking place in the first constituency in Amhara Governorate, the legal and legislative systems in the kingdom facilitated the electoral process through the appointment of an executive director for the by-elections, the formation of a supervisory committee for the constituency, and the announcement of candidacy steps and associated procedures, and the legal sequence in accepting and rejecting applications, and other steps taken by the Supreme Committee for the general supervision of the integrity of the election in accordance with the laws organized in this regard to confirm once again that Bahrain is a country that sustains the democratic process. This success reflects His Majesty the King's pioneering project represented in the National Action Charter in which the people shared the ambition and vision of His Majesty the King for a prosperous future. The charter was a start of a new era of democratic and political activities, followed by constitutional amendments, followed by the modernization of laws and legislation, after which parliamentary life resumed in 2002 and continues steadily according to its constitutional march.
Bahrain's experience in strengthening its laws and legislation on political and democratic affairs is considered a noteworthy experience, especially since it came on a legacy of practices in the formation of a modern state, so that the prosperous era of His Majesty the King became a bright era in which the pillars of the state of institutions and law were strengthened. The Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan Bent Najib Tawfiqi, held a virtual meeting with Turkish Minister of Youth and Sports, Osman Askenbak. Tawfiqi highlighted the strong Bahrain Turkish relations, emphasizing the importance of enhancing cooperation between the two countries, particularly in the youth sector. And for his part, the Turkish Minister lauded the relations linking the two countries in all fields, expressing his country's keenness to further strengthen ties, with, especially in the youth sector, and enhancing expertise. The two sides also discussed means of developing joint cooperation in the best interest of the youth sector in Manama and Ankara. Bahrain's permanent representative to the UN, Ambassador Abdullah Abdullatif Abdullah, met Secretary General of the International Parliamentary Union, Martin Chungong, in Geneva. Ambassador Abdullah stressed Bahrain's keenness to enhance cooperation with the International Parliamentary Union, praising the pivotal role played by the parliamentary diplomacy under the umbrella of the IPU in raising awareness and searching for solutions to current issues through encouraging cooperation and exchanging expertise between national parliaments. And for his part, the IPU Secretary General expressed appreciation for all of Bahrain's efforts and its prominent contributions in supporting the programs and initiatives of the IPU. He pointed to the successful hosting of Bahrain to the work of the General Assembly 146 of the Union last year, through which the Kingdom affirmed its prominent role in consolidating the principles of dialogue and peace. The hurricane team won the His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa Cup for traditional rowing after coming first in the traditional rowing race for heritage boats, 30-foot category, which started from Khalifa bin Salman Bridge and reached the waters adjacent to the Bahrain National Museum. This traditional race is part of the activities of the seventh edition of the Nasser bin Hamad season for marine heritage sports, which is one of the prominent competitions organized by the Bahrain Committee for Traditional Heritage Sports, as it includes multiple competitions that last for three months with the aim of reviving the maritime heritage that Bahrain has historically been distinguished for. The other race for traditional rowing boats will be held on Friday, September 20th, for the Cup of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. And now before we end this bulletin, let's take a look at the latest sustainable development news in this report. To ensure food security in the Kingdom of Bahrain and emphasize the significance of marine resource, the Supreme Council for the Environment, in collaboration with relevant authorities, is conducting ongoing inspections along public coast, central market and fish selling stores across the Kingdom. These efforts focus on verifying licenses, investigating fishing methods, monitoring fish species in accordance with seasonal regulations, and ensuring the safety of workers involved in these activities. Referring to the largest framework of these procedures, Bahrain was keen to develop the legislative framework associated with marine wealth, the most notable of which is Law 7 of 2022 on the environment that aims to achieve environmental protection and sources from all activities and practices that include pollution and environmental degradation, and the decision to prohibit shrimp fishing and other marine-related things that are caught in the territorial waters of Bahrain, aimed at achieving the goal of self-sufficiency and food security. For this goal, the National Marine Culture Center has been replanned in Ras Hayyan, which works to provide high-quality local fish in order to increase the capacity of the volume of marine farming and rise its level of quality and encourage investment in the field of marine aquaculture. The government of Bahrain continued its effort in this regard and included Bahraini fishermen through plans and programs and the rehabilitation of workers in the field of marine aquaculture through a salary support program for those wishing to work in the fishing sector and provided the necessary devices and equipment to practice the profession in addition to training 600 local skills with 
some five years. As a result, the average production of marine wealth of fish traps in the territorial waters of Bahrain reached 18,492 tons in 2023, while the production of marine fish and freshwater from fish farms reached 162 tons in 2022.